Hi, welcome to this video and welcome back to the simulator. We're up at uh, flight level 180, just crossed into transition altitude in this tutorial and uh, we'll continue on uh, from where we were but we're going to start with some stuff on Navigraph uh, Simbrief approach plates. Uh, if you're looking for the first video, which you really should watch uh, before you watch this one, there's a link in the description to that. Anyway, let's get back in the aircraft and get flying. Well, it just occurred to me that I assumed that everyone would know enough about uh, Simbrief to actually uh, get this to work but maybe you don't so I'll just go over some of the basics with Simbrief just so uh, they're covered off. When you go into the heavy menu you actually need to go into the configuration if you've never used this before. Uh, it says Simbrief filed but if you haven't actually got Simbrief set up you'll get something else here. You can choose Imperial or Metric and under filed, if you go into that, uh, you'll see uh, routes only, yes, uh, with SIDs, with stars, and import strategy. You also need uh, your username and user ID, so you need one of those for Simbrief. Now, to get one for Simbrief, you'll need to join Navigraph because Navigraph owns Simbrief. Uh, there's two kinds you can get. You can get a subscription kind or you can get a free kind. Obviously the free kind does not give you um, access to as many uh, things. One of the things you don't get is access to uh, approach plates which are necessary when you're doing an approach. Right, so you can download uh, documents like this from the web which is all the details of airports but they're not very easy to get and may not be available for all airports. Uh, if you're with Navigraph you'll get the latest ones uh, of course. So here's the approach we're doing. We're doing an ILS, actually that's why, we're doing an ILS Z approach. Here we go an ILS Z approach into uh, runway 16. So important things you get off an approach plate are like the ILS uh, DME frequency. Uh, you'll get where the approaches come from. You can come from Lizzie, Boisar, uh, Warren or Wendy or this way from Arby. We're coming from Arby today. The initial fix is Belta. I'll just uh, go down a bit. Okay, so you find the other information here, like your initial fix, which in this case is Belta, up here. Uh, speed should be 185 to 160, and then it shows the angle of the glide path, which is 3 degrees, which is fairly standard. And Oakmel, you should be at 2240, and it shows you here for your ILS category what your minimums are. So that's what you get from an approach plate, and you would get approach plates for all airports if you have a subscription to, uh, to Simbrief and, or actually Navigraph. But you don't need that, obviously. You can find a way around it as I've done there. Uh, the other thing that you can use, the other tool you can use, is one called Little Navi Map. Now I use Little Navi Map a lot. This is Little Navi Map. And you can, for example, import the flight plan that uh, that comes back from Simbrief. Uh, I'll cancel that because it's already loaded. So here's our flight plan. And I'll go up on the drag it up. So that's our flight plan uh, there. I've obviously flown it already so it's the dotted line but you can see that it's at the moment it's just green it's light green and light green just signifies the flight path which is what we've got here but if I want to add the SIDs and stars all I need to do is right click uh, we can go to show departure procedures 
I choose the runway I'm departing on, which is 35, and I get a choice of all the SIDs that are available. I'm doing the Avberg departure, which is this one. I can right click on it again and say insert, and you'll see over here on the left it's added it to the flight path. And it's now, uh, oops, it's now blue <coughs> to signify that that's actually a SID. Now we can do the same thing for the approach. You can right click on the destination uh, and you can show arrival procedures. We know we're coming into 16, so we'll choose runway 16. And now we get our stars and our approaches. So we're doing the Arby. So right click on that, insert star, and we're doing the ILS Z. So we'll right click on that, oops, and we'll insert the approach. So now we have, down here, we have all the approach with the glide slope information. Oops. It does move the map based on where your cursor is. So you've got the uh, glide slope information just there. Uh, but you can zoom out. You'll see that that's blue because that's the actual uh, star. I've also added in uh, the holding pattern here, which is easy enough to, to add in. Uh, so that gives you two choices. You can either go with something like a little navi map, you can get all the information you want there. And that's over here in this table. So now that I've added in the star and the SIDs, it tells you the altitude at each of those points. So at RB it's 13,727, so you'd put in 13,000 or 14,000 uh, if you were manually setting that. That's part of the main flight path because I added it in that way. I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, the FMC might not allow you to change that. Uh, Tanka is 9,000. Uh, Belter should be 4,000 because that's our initial fix. Uh, but you could be up to 5,000. And it depends on how you uh, do the approach here, what it says. I'm surprised that's 5,000. It normally says 4. Uh, and uh, so you can use these values here uh, to put into the FMC. I'll just shut that down. I don't need to save that. So you can use that in your legs page uh, to add that, as we'll do now. Okay, let's start our descent prep checklist. We'll go to the NAVRAD page and we'll check that there are no ILS frequencies or patterns loaded. And then we'll go to the departure arrival and select arrival. Then we'll choose our runway, which is uh, ILS 16Z. Then we'll choose our star approach, which is RB. Then we're going to go up to the MFD and choose plan mode and we're going to step through our plan and we can see there we've actually got an inconsistency. Now that, as I mentioned, that would happen before because of the way that I'd entered the flight path. Right, so there's two things we're going to have to do here. One is stitch this inconsistency together. And the second thing is we have to enter the speeds and altitudes for the waypoints on the approach so that we get a nice smooth descent and approach profile. The way to enter a speed and altitude is just enter the speed with the slash and then the altitude and then just click the right button there and it'll insert that value. Okay, stitching the two waypoints together is next and that's normally fairly easy. It's a little bit more difficult on this one because the actual uh, discontinuity occurs between two pages. So you just type in the next waypoint and then you click on the button to the left of where the four squares are 
and that will stitch the uh, value into that missing uh, space and you can see now it's joined up and it's turned blue and when we hit the execute button it will turn to magenta and we'll be locked into the FMC. Also take note that the FMC has now calculated the top of descent which is a small green circle with TD on the MFD. Now it is important that you go through and make sure that you have a speed and altitude for all the waypoints in the approach. Uh, if you don't do that, uh, the plane may not respond uh, as you would be expecting and you may have to take over control of the altitude during the descent using uh, flight level change. Now we'll go back to the uh, NAVRAD page and we'll check that the ILS is programmed incorrectly. It is 16Z, that's correct, and the frequency has gone in. Uh, sometimes that doesn't happen and you will require the approach plate or the information from little Navi map to get that ILS frequency and enter that. So if the ILS frequency is missing, just type it in and hit that button and it will load that. Right, now we'll set uh, auto brake. I'm going to set it to 3 in this case. And you need to make sure that your spoilers are armed. Right, so for the next step, we go back to departure and arrival and it takes it straight to the index so we just choose approach right so this gives us three different choices for final flap setting for landing uh, it's not very windy today so I'll be choosing flaps 30 you just select the one you want and paste it into the blank then you can go to page 2 and page 3. Now page 3 is critical here again. Once we get to within 50 nautical miles of our top of descent, uh, the descend now button will appear there. So we'll just uh, monitor the progress page now and when we get within 50 nautical miles of top of descent we'll come back and check this page and uh, we'll be ready for the descent. That is the end of the descent prep checklist. Right, well we are some 50 nautical miles now from top of descent so if we go to the VNAV page and check page 3 we'll see that the descent now button has appeared. So as soon as ATC gives us clearance to start our descent we will press that button and then we will put in the altitude into the autopilot that ATC has given us and we'll commence our descent into Melbourne. Descent right, well we've just been given permission to descend to an altitude of 12,000 feet. We press the descent now button. The plane will throttle back automatically to idle and we will enter the 12,000 value into the autopilot and the plane will start its descent to that altitude. Turn uh, passenger seat belts on.
and as we descend through 18,000 which is our transition altitude uh, we need to press the standard button again to switch back to a manually configured barometric pressure and press the B key uh, to automatically set that. Right, well we're now approaching 12,000 feet uh, and we should get another altitude lower to descend to. All we need to do is enter that altitude into the autopilot and the plane will commence its descent. Uh, if it doesn't, press the center of the altitude setting knob and it will start its descent. Right, so we've been given clearance down to 6,000 feet. We need to enter that into the autopilot panel and the plane will commence its descent. Take note of the uh, green Boeing banana, as they call it, on the MFD. We'll show uh, where on our flight path we will actually achieve that uh, altitude and you can use the speed brake uh, to manipulate that. In this case the banana is showing us that we should reach 6,000 feet around about Tunker, so that's correct. So we won't need to play with it too much. Okay, so as we reach uh, flight level 100, it's time to turn on the taxi lights and landing lights and now the next thing to watch out for will be the speed restrictions and altitude uh, changes that may come from ATC. Traffic right, so we're about 240 knots and so we're going to start slowing the plane down. We'll press the center of the IAS button and also the ILS has just come into range. You'll see that in the PFD. The top left hand corner gives you the frequency and other details and you'll get your two uh, vertical and horizontal uh, diamonds appear. We only have the uh, localizer at the moment so we only have the one along the horizontal plane and the vertical one will come in as we get closer towards Belta. So we need to start slowing down. Now I'll try and explain how you do this uh, from the procedure. We're at 240 uh, knots so what you do is you put your flaps out to one degree of flaps and then you change your IAS to bring the indicator down on the primary flight display speed ribbon uh, to where the one degree is indicated. Once you reach the one degree you can then put your flaps to five degrees and then change your IAS to uh, where the five is then you change it to uh, 10 degrees of flaps and you lower the speed down to where the 10 is indicated on the speed ribbon and so on and so on until you 
uh, reach uh, basically 180 where we're going for at the moment you want to be uh, at about 20 degrees of flaps and ready to um, go to the final flap setting which will be 30 degrees and you can confirm that on the approach page that uh, what the speed is I think uh, we did it earlier on it's uh, 30 degrees at 130 knots Time to switch the autopilot from nav mode to approach mode and let it uh, capture the localizer and then when it's in range for the glide slope it'll capture that as well. About uh, two nautical miles from the initial fix, I like to be between 15 and 17 degrees of flaps and at the speed restriction, in this case 180 knots. Landing checklist, we check lights, flaps, speed, double check what our landing speed and flap setting should be for approach and it's 30 degrees uh, 130 knots so make sure the AIS is set to that and flaps are at 30 Speed brakes, auto spoilers and landing gear is down. Between 1000 and 500 feet we'll take control of the aircraft from the autopilot. Uh, unless you're in IMC in which case you would uh, let the autopilot fly the plane down to minimums. Uh, if you can see the runway at that point you would take control. If you can't then you would have to do a go around.
pump brakes to disengage auto brake stow reverses and spoilers exit runway is the next point on the checklist flaps to zero landing lights off and start the APU going to one two one decimal seven get a bearing you're too heavy request taxi to the gate Melbourne ground get a bearing you're too heavy taxi to the gate end of landing checklist taxiing to gate two four by a taxiway alpha get a bearing you're too heavy Uh, at the gate, parking brake set. We'll commence the shutdown checklist. So fuel controls to cut off, fuel pumps to off, taxi lights, beacons, strobes off, seatbelt sign off, anti-ice off. Then we'll connect the jetway. Or for ground power, turn that on. Turn the APU generators off and the APU off. Turn the engine generators off. Turn the flight director off. Call for baggage and catering. Logo lights off. Set the heading bug to the current compass heading. Run the ceiling panel all off except for hydraulics, cold and dark. Wow, that was a long video. I'm glad you've stuck around uh, to the end. And I hope you really get something out of it. I guess you don't realise until you try to document something that is as complex as the heavy mod and the uh, Boeing 787 that uh, you realize uh, what's involved so don't forget that the document I was referring to there is a link to it in the description I'll put a link down there as well uh, to the little Navi map um, software so you can download that if you haven't got it and with that uh, if you've got any comments you'd like to make, please let me know. Any updates you think I should put into the document, please let me know that as well. I'd appreciate a thumbs up. I put a lot of work into these videos. And please tell your friends or if you see comments on Facebook like you can't fly the 787, etc. Um, just point people to this video and the, uh, the document and they can use this to learn how to fly it uh, in a more useful way I guess in a more enjoyable way and uh, they'll get a lot more out of it I think anyway I hope you do too so with that you'll look after each other take care and be kind to one another and we'll see you on the next episode of tips and tricks